Got to get it, Papa. Hello, everybody. Uh, just doing something a little different on this uh, looked at because uh, it's the whole subject's a little different and everything. And I uh, just wanted to let y'all know uh, it deals with a serious uh, subject and uh, historical subject. And I'm not an expert on on this. What I'm presenting to today in this episode is really a condensed, simplified uh, explanation of this uh, event here. And um, I just want to, to let everybody know that. Um, and there's going to be room for, in the comments. There's going to be some notes related to the subject and everything. And um, otherwise, I, I hope you enjoy it. Um, uh, something that was interesting to me, and I think it should be uh, interesting to everybody. Um, so hang on, we'll get going in just a minute. Well, you're probably wondering why I'm standing next to this big field here. It looks like I'm in the middle of nowhere. But uh, it's not really in the middle of nowhere. A long time ago, they had something here that was pretty interesting and pretty amazing. And uh, by today's standards, it's pretty controversial. I'm in uh, Rower, Arkansas. And this little area was a site of a relocation camp for a Japanese uh, people, a lot of them actually citizens of the U.S. But this happened during World War II. And um, you have to kind of put yourself back in the situation of what was happening in World War II. You know, in December, 1941 Japan attacked uh, Pearl Harbor and um, it changed a lot of things for a lot of people on the West Coast there was a lot of Japanese families uh, fairly recent immigrants and um, a lot of these people had gone through the whole process and become American citizens but there was just a lot of confusion there was a lot of suspicion and uh, there were some, generally there were some valid reasons as well uh, for doing what happened next. Uh, the government had to decide, had to decide what, to, what to do because it was Japan. It was the country of Japan. It was well defined who the enemy was. And they attacked Pearl Harbor, as you know and have heard. And they destroyed a good bit of the United States Navy there. And um, everybody thought, well, the West Coast is next. Um, we had, you know, uh, military installations along the West Coast. But as far as defenses go, there wasn't a whole lot to brag about over there. And so the concern was that this, in Pearl Harbor, there were actually um, Japanese spies that helped get intelligence for the attack and so the concern was what about all these Japanese people living on the west coast uh, if we are invaded what's to keep them from helping the invasion forces uh, could that have been some part of a long-term plan or whatever so you know the all they could think of is we have to get these people away from the West Coast so they cannot help a possible invasion. And, you know, good or bad, it's what happened. And um, at the time, it was probably the best solution that they could do. It was, but it wasn't good. It's like there were a lot of people, they were, they were American citizens. They had gone through the whole process. They moved over here. And some of them, it was multi-generations, not going way far back, but it could have been uh, kids, parents, and grandparents 
uh, the families were close. They had close communities because they, they were so different from the United States, from America, that they, of course, wanted to be around people that they understood, people they could uh, communicate easily with and all that. So the, you had strong communities, you had strong ties over there on the West Coast. The solution was to build uh, relocation camps all over the country. I believe there were 10 or 11 of them in different places throughout the country. And here in Arkansas, um, there were actually two camps. There was one out toward the west, or central Arkansas, and uh, there was this one that's uh, way over on the east side. And um, they uh, weren't prison camps, but they were surrounded by wire and fences, and they had guard towers similar, similar to this uh, facsimile here. And um, basically they went and they gathered people up and they said, grab whatever you can bring with you. Uh, we have to relocate you for the duration of the war at least. I don't even know if they said that much. But basically that's what happened is for the duration of the war, they had to relocate them. And so they built these camps. They had, they contracted with people to construct these huge camps, acres and acres. And um, because they were bringing families, they didn't break them up. They didn't divide them up into men go over here, women go over there, and kids go over here. They uh, kept the families together for the most part, as far as I've heard. So the camps were set up with uh, big block areas. And in those block areas, they had like basically like barracks that were divided into apartments. The families occupied these different apartments. But there was no running water, things like that. There was, um, in each block, they had like a laundry, they had a, not a commissary, but they had a place to eat where they'd have meals. They had a recreation uh, building. Um, you know, they had a, you know, a lot of facilities to try to make it, you know, as best they could at the time under this uh, this haste and everything. Um, they did what they could to make it more or less a community. Whether it's successful or not, you'd have to ask somebody that was there and that's, I'm gonna get to that in a little while. These camps, uh, they weren't prisons, but some people would consider them prisons. They weren't luxurious. They were, did have the apartments and stuff, but they're not like apartments, nothing like anything we have now. But when you consider the times, in rural America, there was a lot of people who did not have electricity, who still didn't have running water inside their homes. Uh, if you lived in a city, it was a different story. But if you lived out in the country, um, the, the living conditions, there's a pretty good chance some of the living conditions weren't that much better than what was going on in the camps here. Um, you know, the, the, like the, the buildings were hastily constructed and all, they, ha they had to do it fast, they had to get these things open and get these people moved and all that kind of stuff. So they weren't great, but they could have been a lot worse. That kind of brings me to somebody who is an eyewitness to this, who actually lived in this camp that was built here in Roar, Arkansas. I think I'm saying that right, Roar. It's R-O-H-W-E-R. But um, it's somebody you, you probably, you'd recognize him. Um, he's famous the world over. And um, he was a child when his family was uprooted and moved in over here at this camp. And um, his name is uh, George Takei. Some people say Takai. And if you don't remember his name that way, he's an actor. And he played Sulu in Star Trek. And he lived here when it was a camp, when it was a relocation camp. And he's written about it. He's done some interviews about it, given a lot of... Uh, background about this situation and his impressions and his memories of growing up as a child in this kind of a situation which is hard for any of us to imagine it's just crazy but 
like I said, um, it's, it happened. It's a piece of history, but under the circumstances, it's, it's all they could do. It's what they thought was the best solution. And um, it was right here. I'll show you a little bit of detail. They, they, they don't have a lot out here. None of the buildings have survived at this particular location. Uh, I think at some of the other places, they may have a couple of buildings that survived. But they, they, like I said, they were hastily constructed. They said when they, they closed the camp, um, the property went back to the farmers or the original landowners for the most part and they would use some of the old buildings as storage and stuff like that and gradually they rotted and fell apart just like any old farm neglected farm building and uh, so basically now here at Rower there's there's no uh, buildings left uh, they built that little replica of a, a guard tower because they did have guard towers um, and uh, we'll go take a little look around it real quick. Yeah, 120,000 Japanese Americans from the West Coast, some of whom were legal U.S. citizens. Uh, this actually shows a couple of the, the camps. Here's where we are, Rower. Jerome, I think it's actually a little bit further over there. Um, but they all came from along here. And they just, they got, said, we got to get these people away from here. In case the worst happens. Luckily, the worst didn't happen. Let's see what else we have. Well, this shows a little map of how the, uh, the center was set up. See, this is the actual property. This is a huge piece of property. We're standing right there, like, I guess, at the front. Something like that. But all this was connected with it. Because they had farm and everything. Ah, I'm trying to think if they used the uh, people. Worked on the farm. And stuff. Yeah. Farming and timber. But this is a map. Actually, there is an existing smokestack. It's still back there. Um, yeah, here we are. Oh, I just drove in. So I'll have to see if I could see the, uh, the smokestack back there. But this is one thing that's interesting. Um, there's a memorial cemetery we can go take a look at. Because unfortunately, the, with the duration of the war and all the families that were here, some people passed away while they were here. And so they established a cemetery for them, a traditional Japanese type cemetery. So we're gonna go take a look at that in a minute so you can see what that's like. Yeah, this is one of the, the weird things about it is uh, basically they uprooted all these people. Some people had businesses, uh, they had families and homes. They were Americans. They had decided to stay here and be established here and continue their life here. And they were gone for the duration of the war from 1942 to the end of the war. And once it was done, they... Um, did what they could, the government did what they could to get these people back to their homes and their businesses. If they were managed to, to keep things open, have somebody to help them or something like that, you know, who knows? It's like different stories. But um, it, it, was, it was just a, a crazy time. War is crazy. And this is a prime example of some of the stuff that can happen. Let me go take a look around. You can see Rower was declared a National Historic Landmark uh, way back in 1992. 
And this is the cemetery area. See, there are even three uh, infants here passed away in the camp. The smokestack. You can see it's pretty far off. This is a huge uh, development here, this camp. It covered pretty much everything you see right now. The cemetery is right back there between those through those trees and the the guard tower where I started is the same direction further back. Interesting piece of history, no doubt. I'm, I'm planning to put some, uh, some notes down in the comment section about this. So there's some connections you can make, including the ones here in Arkansas that have a history. There's a museum connected with this uh, site and everything. And um, if you know of any, any sites, any places to, uh, that have information about the uh, relocation camps and such, uh, eyewitness stories and things like that, um, you know, please uh, put them down in the comments and uh, share them. Uh, history is something we need to know and study and learn from it's not something good or bad it's not something we need to just ignore you learn from history that's what they've always said and uh, this is something we can learn from in the meantime i'll see you on down the road hang on to something because look that's coming back pretty soon